Hello, everyone, and welcome once again to Geeks Not Nerds, the podcast. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince. Hey, Vince, it's a regular podcast, dude. That's right. It's not irregular. It's a regular. <laughs> you guys aren't going to believe this, but for the next half an hour, Vince are going to sit here, and we're going to talk to you, and we're not going to be watching a film. <laughs> that's, that's right. We're just going to be talking about stuff. But soon, we will be doing this and watching a film. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, here pretty soon, um, in the next couple weeks, Vince and I are going to record a couple of commentaries, and what we plan on doing is the Cap and Vince Childhood Nostalgia series of commentaries. Yeah. Yeah, where uh, we're going to watch uh, the film that Vince feels like had the most influence on him when he was a kid that's not a superhero comic book film, and we're going to do the one that uh, that way for me, too. So for Vince, we're going to be watching... Oh, either Blues Brothers or Ghostbusters. We I'll still flip have, a coin. We still haven't decided. And for me, we're going to be watching Field of Dreams. Which I think we have some viewers who would argue that the Ghostbusters are superheroes. I disagree, because they get paid. Yeah, that's kind of what I think, too. <laughs> I think we could still get away with that, though. At least at least they're not, like, comic book-based, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, Although and they do have a good comic right they now. They do have a good comic right now, but they were never known for comics prior to now, you know what I mean? True. Like, like, like I, I think that Eric Burnham's book is going to really solidify them in a comic book world, in, in the comic book world, in a way that they never had before. Not that there weren't Ghostbusters comics, but it was never a comic book thing. Yeah, no, there there were some comic book series, uh, especially the one that was tied to the real Ghostbusters TV show. But uh, uh, other than that, I think 88 Miles Per Hour Studio had a well-received one, but not something that was huge. I've never heard of that studio. Uh, I'll tell you what, they didn't do very much. Because I tried to order the hardcover, because they supposedly had a foreword that was going to be by Dan Aykroyd. So I tried to order this, uh, I, I forget what it was, the real Ghostbusters something, the Ghostbusters... Uh, that uh, name's not coming to me. Anyway, so I tried to order the hardcover, and I waited for this thing forever. I, I, they said that if you didn't pre-order it, you weren't going to get a copy. So I pre-ordered. And then I waited three years, and they never made it. Wow. So I uh, emailed the company and said, hey guys, you still have my money. Uh, what are we going to do? And they said, well, we can give you other comics in exchange for your money, or we can just send you your money. Right. And uh, uh, Graham Cracker Comics is what it was. Uh, I forget what state they're based out of, but you can go to their website. And they, they, they gave me some extra stuff, too, just to make up for the fact that I'd waited so long for this. Were you the only person who pre-ordered it, Vince? Uh, I think there was me and about a couple hundred other people. Maybe. Oh, okay. Okay. That's hilarious. Actually, I don't know how many people there were. I know that uh, Graham Cracker Comics was the only official company that was taking orders that was not the, uh, the company itself, 88 Miles Per Hour Studios. So, uh, commentaries for next time. Commentaries? Yeah, it's going to be <laughs> exciting. Today, we're going to do a normal topic, and today's topic, uh, Vince and I kind of came up with together, and I think this might be fun. What we're going to talk about is really adult properties uh, for, for, for fiction, comics, films, things like that, and whether or not they can be turned into, or should be turned into, something for children. And we'll also talk about the reverse of that, things that are made primarily just for children, uh, really, really uh, kind of kind of silly kids' things, and if they can be, and if those things can be turned around and made into something that is uh, more for adults and that has, uh, you, know, you know, more uh, more deeper and engaging uh, narratives. So uh, that's the topic for today. Vince, is there anything you can think of that you would just go bananas in a, in a positive way, in a good way, if they took a really adult, rated R, don't let your kids see this thing and turn it into something, you let your kids see this thing, but the people that usually like rated R things might not care for it. Uh, oh, I was going to try to do something really risque, like pick up the name of a porn movie and make it into a, <laughs> I couldn't think of anything. I think they should make the children's version of Cool World. <laughs> But Cool World actually wasn't too bad. I was a little surprised. Oh, I've never seen it. Yeah, it was it was solid though. I was when I was a kid, I always thought it was too creepy and, and strange for for me to watch, even though there was cartoons in there. And I thought it was going to ruin my perception of what cartoons were. And I watched it uh, within the last couple of years, and I thought, you know what, that wasn't bad. <laughs> and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go as far to say it was good. I'm just gonna say it wasn't bad. Uh, I want to start here because I just thought of this. There are a couple shows. Uh, that are a couple things that are really intended for uh, a slightly more mature audience, we'll say, that became children's TV cartoons. Uh, the Mask, which is something that was really not exactly for children in the comic book format. No, although I think a lot of kids grew up with it. 
Yeah, fair enough. I mean, that's the thing, is that comic books, even the ones that are not intended for children, even the ones that might be a little risque, uh, I think a lot of parents gave the benefit of the doubt and just said, here you go, kid! Well, and also, the mask film, I mean, it was a PG-13 film, it wasn't anything like the comic book. Right. Uh, which was an extremely, you know, bloody kind of, kind of exercise. Yeah, I went back and looked at some uh, mask comics recently and thought... Wow. I have the first two trades if you want to read them. Yes, I do. Uh, I don't like the writing in the middle. All there's some interesting ideas, but the, I don't. It's it's not well written. There was one mini series that I picked up the <laughs> like the third or fourth issue. I forget what it was, and just looked through it and thought, oh my goodness, there's a lot of like, gore and strange crap in here. Tons of it. Yeah, like, this is not appropriate for kids at all. Not at all. Yeah, I think that the mask is. Sorry to get back to the topic. I, I think that that uh, that the movie is. Kind of on at the same level as like Roger Rabbit, in in like 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 pretty much for adults. Not a lot of stuff in there that kids are going to realize is inappropriate for them, but yeah. sort of is, wouldn't you say? Like they sneak it in under the radar. I feel like there are certain things. Like for example, uh, I don't know if I could even say this on here, but uh, let's say that there is a piece of car part that gets shoved into the sphincter of a man. Uh, that yeah. is very cartoony and strange, and it's cartoon violence, so kids don't think much of it. But when you really look at it, it's pretty gruesome. It's, yeah, sure. <laughs> they're being wheeled out on, uh, what do you call those things? Stretchers? They're, they're not in good shape. These and people are probably going to die. I like the idea of, 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 for a minute, looking at those two movies together, because they both did the same thing, where, where they were marketed a lot toward kids. They were, excuse me, very much adult kinds of outings, and then spawned all kinds of things for kids. I, I, I mean, I mean, like like the like the mask had that mask TV show. There was a, there was a, there were a lot of action figures. There were there were um, there were uh, you know there were video game. There was a video game. There were all kinds of things. But Roger Rabbit did the same thing. And uh, what was interesting is that Roger Rabbit had um, these uh, really kid friendly cartoony comics, and they didn't work at all because. <laughs> I mean, like, I, I, re I read a couple of them, and I did a vault on one, and they were kind of fun. You know, there were some, some, some funny ideas in them on, on kind of a, you, you know, a, you know old school, like, like, a, like Disney or Warner Brothers cartoon sort of level. But the problem is they also tried to um, include the ideas from that movie of Toontown and human beings really existing, and without that adult element, that doesn't work. You know, I think part of the deal with uh, Roger Rabbit and The Mask is that both of these properties, I'm glad you thought of Roger Rabbit, uh, both of these properties really have uh, the same thing in common, which is they are trying to make fun of or mock the traditional cartoon. They are, they are showing things that are just would be disturbing provided they happen in the real world, and guess what? In these movies they do. So, it's, they even did that in uh, the Twilight Zone movie that came out, oh god, I forget when, the one Dan Aykroyd's in. That's early 90s, late 80s? Yeah, I th I'm thinking it's one of those. Somewhere two. around there, anyway. But, uh, I've, I've seen it. The, the kid that can make things come into existence, that who can alter all of reality. Uh, makes cartoons character Mar <laughs> he makes cartoon characters come to life and they're really disturbing and frightening and everybody in the in that particular sketch are, are freaked out by them well of course because it is way out of this world indeed <laughs> <laughs> Um, and what ends up happening is that those those uh, shows that are made for kids based on those things that are turning on their heads, things that are made for kids, have to kind of go full circle and regurgitate and become what they were before. You know, you know, you know, mm -hmm. go 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 back and and become traditional kid animation stuff. But what made them different was that they were messing with those ideas, and so and so it becomes kind kind of a strange thing. So um, I'm not sure that it makes sense for those things to go back and become kids things. I mean, I don't remember the Mass TV show being bad. I liked it when I was a kid. I haven't watched no, it since. I thought it was okay when I was younger, but uh, frankly, I, I can't really speak for its quality. Now. I don't think I'd want to even go back and try to watch it now. Um, yeah, like, just in case it's not good. Just in case it's not good. And you don't want to ruin that childhood memory. Yeah, and it, it just seems like th those those I, those things were for the adults that had grown up with cartoons mm -hmm. and and uh, you know you know playing playing with their perceptions now that they're adults. So. You lose something when you try to turn those things back in, in, into stuff. However, it's interesting the, the middle of the road things that sort of work. Did you ever see the Men in Black cartoon? 
Oh yeah, it was quite good, or what I remember of it. You know, I feel like uh, maybe we can maybe we can even make the statement here that sure. uh, something that's a big budget blockbuster that's not inherently adult that just has some adult qualities, like maybe it uses profanity here and there, maybe its actions a little bit violent. Uh, all you do, all you do is uh, tone down the language and the violence, and you have a show that's appropriate for kids. Sure, because everything else in it worked okay. Yeah, um, I mean the, the idea of a giant cockroach creature alien is not necessarily something that you couldn't put into a children. Show. If I had a time machine and could go back and do something that I thought that I think would make a load of money, um, I would go back to um, like the mid '90s, uh, just after the original Ninja Turtles series uh, was was over, and I would do a reboot and I would base it on the first film. You know, that's what I would do. I would do. I would take that movie, and I would take that continuity, I would make a cartoon show, and I would just make it, you know, kid-appropriate, because that movie is, except it's a little bit violent, and there's a little bit of language in it, you know what I mean? And I would have the exact same tone of that first Ninja Turtles movie in animation, uh, which is a little bit like what we got in 03, but, but, but like, I, I still think you could go even farther than that and do something that looks a little bit more like that movie. You, you know, because, you know, they made that movie... They started making that movie before the cartoon show was popular. Mm-hmm. Like they were basing it on the on, on the comics, and that's why it was kind of an adult, a more of an adult thing. And um, yeah, I mean, they even advertised it as. I mean, granted, you know, the cartoon was co- the cartoon was already out, and they had this uh, this advertising slogan that right. said, "This isn't a cartoon." But I'm just saying like that bef- when they started working on it, that, that that thing had already gotten greenlit before the series was going. Yeah, so I mean, they did something that was obviously wholly separate from the from the cartoon show. So, yeah, yeah. And, I agree. And, but I think it's important to note that. That that movie wouldn't have been what it was if it had, if they had started working on it even a year later. Yeah. Ooh. You see what I'm saying? Narrow that's, margin of error. That's my point. Yeah. yeah. If and so wouldn't it have been cool if that? I mean, I'm not saying it would have been cool if the original cartoon had never been made because that was a big part of my childhood. I'm just saying that 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 like that like except except for that thing, you know, except for that fact, wouldn't it have been kind of interesting if the movie had been really popular and then they'd made a cartoon show based on it? That's that's what I'm saying. And what would that have been like? Indeed. You know, I feel like uh, to look at how the difference between Ninja Turtles and uh, Ninja Turtles 2 Secret of the Ooze, I think is what it was. Exactly. Uh, I feel like that one, uh, the, the sequels are heavily influenced by the cartoon show's tone. So so you get a movie that's... That's what, the, that's what the parents wanted back then, but you know, right. looking back on it, they weren't as good. I mean, storytelling yeah. wise, and yeah. I mean, granted, I'll admit when I was a kid, I liked them, and I'll admit I still kind of like them based on nostalgia. But uh, yeah, not, not three at all for me. But I can still sit through ooze. Yeah, I mean, there's fun things about it, not necessarily good things about it. But <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple good ideas here and there. But um, uh, it, you know, what? I went back and watched Ninja Turtles. Uh, now, I, now I'm extremely familiar with it because I watch it every so often. But. Uh, uh, Back when I was, you know, still trying to come of age and figure out what's going on in the world, uh, I realized how not appropriate for children the first one was, and it's sort of it's the, sort the of first film. Me. Yeah, the first one. Yeah, right. The first uh, Ninja Turtles movie, live action. It was so it was so strange to me. Like, there's even a little bit of profanity in there. Right. There are like scary moments in that movie. <laughs> Shredder is really pretty menacing, and yeah, I went, "Oh sure. my goodness!" And I was always impressed that he's pretty menacing and wears purple. Yeah, and a trash bag. At least that's what that looks like. His cape looks like a crumpled trash it's bag. It's better me. than a trash bag. It's it's, it's, it's got that flashy underside that's pretty cool again. It's a heavy duty trash bag. Thank you very much. It's the kind that when he's ready to take it off and throw it away, it's got the straps that you tie it. <laughs> um. Uh, where, where exactly are we going with this? Well, real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, there was a movie. I feel like this needs to be mentioned. There was a movie, The Toxic Crusader, released by Troma, and uh, it was not by any means intended for children. There was nudity. There was death. There was graphic violence. Toxic Avenger. Yeah. Crusader later. Yeah, yeah. It's Toxic, Toxic Avenger. Toxic Avenger. And then the Toxic Crusaders, like Toxic Avenger and the Crusaders or something? Yeah, I thought that the Crusaders was a team and the Avenger was the yes. Toxic Avenger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, Actually, sorry, sorry. But anyway, yeah, you're right. There's the Toxic Avenger. And they made then a kid's show out of that, and that exactly. is one of the raunchiest B-movies I ever saw when I was a kid. Exactly. That, that, the movie has nearly nothing except for a man with a mop and a... And a deformed face. Let me explain to viewers. Really, nothing. Let me explain common. to listeners that maybe uh, have not seen that how crazy it is that they turned this into a kids' show. They took a film where 
this where guys are jumping in a car, running people over on purpose, and then drawing a picture of them on the side of their car and and, uh, and check marking <laughs> it off. Yep, that's what that movie was like. That was they made a kid show out of that. I Not to mention all the nudity in that film. Yeah, there's there's nudity. There was graphic. Like like here's the plot line. I'm not looking forward to doing Avenger. a rewind on that. <laughs> so the Toxic Avenger. Don't laugh is... at me too much, or I'll make you watch it with me. Oh, <laughs> actually, I don't hate that movie. I oh, okay, well fun. then I'm totally gonna make. It. I'll make you do the rewind. You do it all. Yeah, <laughs> so sorry. so the Toxic Avenger then... uh, starts out as a guy. I forget what his name is. Like. Uh, Melville or Mervin, Mervin or something. It's something really nerdy. It's yeah. something really eighties and nerdy. And he is brutalized by these people who are evil and killing people. And uh, he's tossed into a vat of toxic waste that's conveniently in the scene. And he turns into this. It's like Sandman in Spider-Man Three. <laughs> he's turned into this giant, brutish, deformed guy who becomes the Toxic Avenger. And he goes out and he kills people that he thinks deserve. <laughs> Being killed. It's it's a it's an extremely brutal movie full well, of when irredeemable people. It was a revenge people. thing because it was mostly just you know I'm a nerd and you're mean to me and I'm gonna kill you. And it was yeah, like, he know, went out and killed like. people that were wronged or did wrong to him. Which fair enough, they did wrong to him, but still <laughs> they tried to kill him. He did kill them. <laughs> it's, it's the way it worked out. Oh man. Which granted, he wasn't exactly the most stand up guy beforehand either. He was. He did. Anyway, Boy, I'm not I haven't seen that it. movie in years. I'm surprised how much I remember about it. Yeah, me too. But, well, now that we're talking about it, I'm surprised by how much I remember about it. Yeah. And, and then I feel a little dirty, too. I don't like that. I don't want to remember that movie. Like, So, granted, I don't really remember the cartoon show that well, but I, I remember... Saw it. When I, when, I, when I was a kid, my, I guess my parents thought it was okay for me to watch. Maybe that was just because it was a cartoon. I don't remember much about it. I, I even remember that they bought me the video game for the... <laughs> And yes, that was really popular for Memory. Yeah, I got a big kick out of the video game. I liked it a lot when I was younger. Huh? And I had a lot of I had friends that had the toys, and yeah, it was it was really like there were a lot of things like that. Uh, I think Attack of the Killer Tomatoes had a show. Uh, oh, yeah, so they many, did. So which many is another things. trauma title. Attack of the Killer Tomatoes is trauma. Yeah. Okay, I'm actually reviewing that this week. So. The, uh, oh man. It's oh no, that's gonna be great. <laughs> uh, you can watch that with me too. No. no. Uh, v- v- Vince, uh, my my list of things to review right now is all gonna become things that you have to review. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm doing a, I'm doing Attack of the Killer Tomatoes and for uh, United because somebody requested it. Oh right. Thank on. you, by the way. And then um, <laughs> and then uh, on on Superhero Rewind uh, uh, directly after that, I'm doing the um, unreleased 1994 Fantastic Four film. So um, it's going to be a lot of B movies all year. All but right. I am not turning around and doing Toxic Avenger right after that. Man. That's not going to happen. You should review um, trauma movies and just see what people say. The early '90s was so interesting because of how many. Um, of these really, really adult sorts of things got turned into movies, uh, or got turned into, into cartoon shows. Um, Fox had a, uh, a Diabolic cartoon uh, based on Danger Diabolic, yeah, or not, not based on Diabolic, of course, the, the film from 1968, they added danger to it because they thought that more Americans would see it for some reason. Anyway, whatever. Um, <laughs> because it's dangerous. That's, and we're that's not going to that, that's, a, that's a really adult Italian superhero who's not really a superhero because he's basically a terrorist and he attacks the government and steals things because he can and the government's um, incompetent and sucks and so we root for him because the, inco- the government's um, incompetent and he's not. He's fun to watch. And they made a cartoon out of it. Um, like, there's so many things like that. So, like, I guess I guess to get to the actual question for today, like, like is this is this a cool thing? Is this fun? Do we like this? I kind of like some, some of this. I like the idea... I like the idea of making things for children because I think you can do some really clever, funny things. You do it kind of tongue in cheek, right? Yeah, like we were talking before this thing started, uh, before we started recording this about uh, that spoof cartoon that they did about with the Watchmen, where Rorschach's a friend of the animals. Yeah, yeah, uh, it was uh, Saturday Morning Watchmen, yes. and uh, it was just it was just a YouTube video that somebody made um, that was uh, I think Terry Tunes. I forget. Well, I forget the name of the channel, but yeah, um, well. but uh, it, it was just a. Uh, it wasn't even even a cartoon. It was just it was just the uh, the intro for a cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and Vince and I watched it when it first came out. It came out the week Watchmen came out. It was really yes. cool. He released it just when Watchmen came out. Vince and I both looked at each other and like, I want to watch this show. Somebody make it. It's hilarious. It's and they had this uh, this joke in there that even Cat pointed out right before we started. I'd forgotten about it, which was uh, uh, the I've watched comedian it lots of times because I love it. <laughs> the comedians looking to get that kiss. And, uh, of course, it wasn't a kiss he was after in the comic or in the movie. He was trying to rape people, yeah. <laughs> I love the idea that you can make these things innocent. It becomes a joke for people who have seen the original thing or read the original thing. And, 
It's, Remember the line, John will give you cancer, and he turns <laughs> into a car. <laughs> <laughs> like, like it's funny in the intro, but I think it would remain funny. Like, I think you could keep making this show. I think that's. I think it's a great idea. I think. Uh, oh no, Adrian! The Reds are polluting the lake. <laughs> I think it's it'd be okay to make something that's uh, sort of yeah, as you said, tongue in cheek. Something that knows it's not supposed to be taken serious, like a Spawn children show. I want to see this. I would like to see a Spawn children show, uh, and I think it would be great for Spawn to not come from hell, but rather come from heck. That's <laughs> hilarious. There's actually I, I've got it sitting right here. Believe it or not, um, there, there's actually a thing that tried to do that called uh, the Adventures of Spawn. Oh my goodness! And uh, have you ever seen this? No, and, I've and, not. Uh, I want this to be a cartoon show. There's actually a, a figure line based on this that I want. And um, there's That's some adorable. Yeah, it's adorable. It's just hilarious. And and like like there's these villains and they're at like the Citadel of Doom. Citadel and uh, Doom. It, it it reminds you a lot of like um, Super Friends. It's like Spawn if it was Super Friends. A little bit edgier looking. You know what I mean? It's got a little bit of a Japanese twinge to it. But, um... Oh my goodness. There, there's, there's, a, there's some really uh, great stuff. And I, I kind of wish that I had looked at this and prepared before we started talking. Because there's, um... There, there are a couple things that I... I haven't read this, but I flipped through it. And there were a couple lines that just flipping through it. I was like, what? That's hilarious. But anyway, um... Yeah, you should read this because it's 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 very funny. And Spawn is uh, is not Spawn, but he's Spawn X, and he's I don't think he's actually from Hell in this. It's, he's Mega Man's cousin. Uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> share the um, same last name, X. But yeah, it's just all these kind of Saturday morning cartoon sort of versions of like Overkill and Redeemer, and it's very it's very mid nineties. Um, I'm trying to think <laughs> of adult titles that uh, I would like to see made for children. Because there are some things I don't think would necessarily work all that well. Yeah. You know? I, like, I'm not real sure that, like, a Punisher kid show would work. And things yeah. like that. Yeah, no, it wouldn't be. I don't the know Preacher why. of the kid show. No. <laughs> oh, my God. The boys. Oh, I, I don't God. know. I don't know why Spawn works in a way that those don't. Is it because the costume's all flashy and because he, he does have some, like... I guess I'm answering my own questions, but he, yeah, he, I think does, you're right. he does have some like really, really flashy kinds of um, like uh, like like villains and supporting characters. Like you've got Cygor, who's a giant monkey cyborg. You know, he's a, he's a cyborg monkey. Yeah, Overkill, who like is is this just giant built you know cyborg that's like you know the the the, the first action figure that came out, his own head pops off. I mean, like you know, I, I think just just based on the looks of these things, I wouldn't mind seeing a Jonah Hex kid show. That'd be interesting. I, I think just a Western kid show in general is an interesting idea. That'd be kind of... You know, I like the idea of a Western kid show. I wouldn't mind seeing, uh, like, a fistful of nickels or something instead oh, of a fistful funny. of dollars. Yeah. Or uh, the good, the bad, and the young or something. like. <laughs> just the idea of... You know, I think I've seen these things before where kids will have, like, a candy cane instead of a gun. <laughs> and, uh, I think it'd be that's, funny. That's a little bit... Bizarre. I think it'd be really funny to have that happen, and I would get a kick out of it. Let's uh, let's talk really quickly about, about going the other direction. About going the other direction. Now, you can take things that were previously meant for children, like say Space Ghost, and uh, turn it into something that's really meant more for adults, like uh, say the DC comic book series, the six issue series of Space Ghost. Oh yeah, and uh, the, because I mean, I completely took that seriously, and the the, the mythology was fascinating. Yes. Uh, the, now, they had really interesting ideas in there that are not necessarily inappropriate for children, like Zorak having a hive mind. That was really cool. And I don't know if that was in the original show or not. but uh, It wasn't. I no, they made that up for that. I think that's really cool. I like the idea that... And, and Space Ghost being a guy who's not exactly the most well-put-together, mentally healthy human being is okay. I mean, you, there are things in there... like. Story elements are not necessarily not meant for children, but there are other story elements that really are. Like, for example, the uh, the the bad guy who cut the child out of the wife and killed the child too. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Where he's destroying, where he pretty much talks about doing this, uh, or doing the C-section, and he comes in dripping with blood, 
And of course, that's not appropriate for children. No, and it was that's really heavy stuff. And what's really cool about it is it's like like obviously because it's taking something kiddish and going the other direction. I think that it doesn't have to be tongue in cheek. Maybe that's an obvious thing to say, but the reason I bring that up is because I, I, I feel like you could show somebody Space Ghost who didn't know what Space Ghost was. And they could appreciate it on the, the the level of dramatic storytelling. Whereas going going the way we were talking about in the first place, where where you take a really serious thing and you make it a kids thing, I think you have to know it first. Yeah, and that's interesting. Space, you could hand anybody who who likes a good dramatic uh, superhero comic book Space Ghost, and they'd probably enjoy it. Yeah, I think you're right. And I don't think you have to know Zorak to appreciate Zorak in that. I mean, and I suppose maybe uh, the significant thing here is that the, the Space Ghost source material is not exactly uh, goofy. It's it's supposed to be taken seriously, but it's just a show that's intended for kids. Yeah. Actually, Space Ghost is not that silly. Yeah. I mean, there's bits of it that sort of are, but... I but mean, just, they have whatever that monkey's name is, or well, well, but, but, space thing that follows them around. Yeah, but uh, you see, the thing is, Hanna-Barbera, everybody had to have a monkey, or a dog, or a cat, or something. <laughs> the Wonder Twins, they have Gleep. Well, and then, like, Space Ghost basically had his own set of Wonder Twins. Yeah. You know, Jane and Jace, which were at the end of Space Ghost, and that was pretty cool. Um, or, or actually, they actually figure into that plot, don't they? Those yeah, kids? They, uh, and then they become them at the I end? I think they were orphans that uh, Space Ghost was trying to help. Like, that was part of his uh, his hero's journey, was that he lost his kid and family and had to figure out a way to uh, compensate for these kids. They totally figured that in well. Yeah, and, it was and, extremely and made it work. I still, and I know I said this before, and maybe people have heard me say this and maybe are tired of me saying this, but I still say you could do it with Power Rangers. I still say that you could make the, the, the Space Ghost level serious Power Rangers. I think you could. I think you'd have to tweak a lot, but I think that there is... They tweaked a lot in Space Ghost. Indeed. But you're right. The building blocks in Space Ghost aren't inherently silly. They are in Power Rangers. Mm. I mean, I, f- I feel like uh, Power, Lord Zed... Power Rangers by itself, that name sounds a little goofy. Yeah. yeah. Well, Space Ghost does, too. It's quirky. It's quirky before it's... Yeah, it, it is quirky. Come to think of it. But, uh, I mean, I, I guess... Could you still call it that? I mean, you would probably would take Mighty Morphin out, but could you still call it Power Rangers and make something really si- really serious? I don't know. I mean, maybe you would just call them Rangers in the in the, in, in the actual story itself. But then it actually called be called Power Rangers, and then just like what the power is would be explained. So then the title would make sense. Yeah. So there are powerful Rangers of some kind, and I think the thing that really validates your statement is uh, Lord Zed, who is really wicked looking. <laughs> yeah. That, and that uh, Rhea, design, who cares? But uh, Lord but Zed, you take that design just the way it is, and yeah, he's a really interesting, scary looking guy. I mean, I feel like, uh, but I think Zordon's really interesting too. Yeah. I mean, like, I think you can make Zordon totally. You could play him completely straight. I think so. Just the, the, with the head in the jar. I don't think it's anything sillier than anything they did in Space Ghost. I mean, like, I think you can totally. You can I totally think get, you get might get away with that. Ought to tweak the costumes for the Power Rangers a little bit. Maybe so. It would be fun to try to get away because again, they they left Space Ghost the same way it was. Like make them look a little more like uh, uniforms, like military uniforms, because they are Rangers. So what I would do with it is I would try to have some kind of reason that they were different colors, yeah. and not have them wear the same color when they're out of. You know, maybe costumes. all the Rangers come from <laughs> India if they're if they have secret identities at all. Maybe all the rangers come from different countries and they use uh, the colors of the flag or something. Ooh, that's interesting. Where they're, like, representative. Yeah. And everybody knows that they are. Yeah. Yeah. See, I've always said that, too. I don't like the idea that, that they would all, at least for a serious thing, I don't like the idea that they would all already know each other and live in the same town. It's like, it's like, it seems like Zordon would pull the best of the best all over the country, right? Yeah, or the world. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, the, that's what I meant to say. It was the world. I don't know why I said country. Yeah, of, 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 of the world, sure. Zordon just thinks that the world is the United States, and he doesn't realize that it extends beyond that. <laughs> there are there are a couple of kids' titles. I want to say He Man uh, is something that is ripe for a yeah. decent movie. Now, I feel like He Man isn't something that should necessarily be made into a uh, an adult oriented movie. I think it should be made into something that's uh, campy. I think it's something that should be made into something that's larger than life that all the characters take completely seriously. Yeah, yeah, it plays well. That's kind of how I would play Power Rangers too, but like probably, but like it, it, excuse me, the characters play it straight. We know that it's a little bit goofy, but we're, we're sucked into it, and so it doesn't matter. And that's part of the charm of it is that it's a world that looks different. Yeah, he Man is not. That's the thing is He Man is a goofy name, but if he is a barbarian. Uh, leader of some kind, or maybe the most effective warrior from a barbarian clan, or whatever, so that Shira can be involved in yada blah blah. Uh, it's I feel like it's 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 ripe for the picking. Another one I really want. 
Thundar the Barbarian. Really? Yes. I don't know anything about that. Oh, I think that would be so cool to have a live action movie of Thundar the Barbarian. And I wouldn't necessarily play that one quite as tongue in cheek as the He Man. Aren't they doing Thundercats? Uh, I don't know. I think that's kind of a strange idea considering they're cat people. I'm not sure how you do it without just massive amounts of CGI. Yeah, or prosthetics, and then the, even then it'd start looking a little fake. <laughs> I want to read you a silly line out of the Spawn book because it makes me laugh. Silly this, line. Uh, this, this Adventures of Spawn book. So, so, so the Spawn comes up against Sigor and he says, "You come here threatening innocent lives, my family lives. What were you, th- my family's lives? What were you thinking? We've been through this before, and it's always the same old story. I waste a good hour of my time, and you end up in a coma." <laughs> <laughs> I sure I have been in many comas. Not every time I just realize many comas. <laughs> Man, maybe I'm losing brain cells. Should stop that. Well, um, I feel like we did this podcast at the risk of just uh, accidentally uh, uh, writing the, the the foundations for several fan fictions. <laughs> People out there like duly noted, Captain Vince. Here I go. That's the sound of typing. Yeah, and you know, I've been talking about this, uh, this 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 writing Power Rangers series for so long thing that I know eventually I'm just gonna have to do it. You know, yeah, you know, it'd be. Uh, I don't like. I don't want to write fan fiction, but then I'm like, ah, I keep talking about it. I gotta, you know. It'd be a labor of love. I mean, I think it'd be fun for you to write it as a as a comic book and find an artist for it and just put it out there for free. Yeah, just let people read it. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and go to rants. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, I, can I go first? Sure. I have a very quick rant. I don't like that drawing is hard. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> that's my that's my whole rant. When I was five, I told my mom I was going to grow up and be an artist. I grew up, and I don't draw any better than I did when I was five. <laughs> okay, maybe a little better. I don't have the imagination for it. And before you say, well, Captain Logan, I thought you had an imagination. <laughs> I mean, I don't have a visual... I, I can't, I can't like, like visually picture stuff. Like, like I can maybe do sort of okay with, like, a still life thing. Maybe, kind of. But, like, just, just drawing something off the top of my head and then, like, like do, putting it in my own pose or, or, or doing it stylistic, whatever. Um, like, I've never been good at it, and it's not like I haven't tried. When I was growing up, I drew all the time, and I could never be good at it. And I just tried, and I tried, and I got drawing book after drawing book. And I, I, I have several drawing books. I don't draw. I can't do it. I'm terrible at it. And part of what stops me now from going back and trying, because I've thought of things like, well... I'm older now, maybe I was a little bit lazier back then, and I might put my nose to the grindstone more and actually learn about perspective and actually, you know, try to make the outline of the character with his, like, stick feet and his stick self and everything, and then go around it like you're supposed to, Um, whereas before I would try to cut the corner of just drawing it, but then I think of things like... There are so many good artists these days, and with things like uh, DeviantArt and things... Like, like, it's so much easier than it ever has been, just like with making videos and just like with with, uh, with writing books and everything else, to get your stuff out there, that there are so many really great, competent artists that you can go look at right now. I feel like it would take too long to get anything like good enough, and I still feel like I could only, you know, at, at, like, I feel like not starting at a really early age, I could only ever get to sort of okay. And I'm not sure if I care enough to get to sort of okay at drawing. And I just don't like that it's that that it's so hard. I I, I, I feel like I, I feel like you know writing is not necessarily the most easy thing in the world. In the world, I mean, it, it takes it takes time to get good at it. But at least making the letters or typing the buttons is not hard. Yeah. So anyway. Well, drawing a line is not necessarily hard. But I, it's not the same thing. <laughs> Uh, maybe I not, get you. It's not really the same thing because, like, you can already make. You know, if you're, if if you like, like, uh, if you can read and write, you already know how to put a sentence together. I don't know how to put like a person together. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. Anyway, um, so I'm not complaining about any like. <laughs> I, I'm obviously not complaining about anything that like is is wrong societally that can change. It's just a real world thing of I don't like that. That's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Anyway, was that Fair was enough. that rant wor- worthy at all, Vince? I liked it. I got um, a kick out of okay. it. Okay, well, your turn. So you know, I was I was super close to to following or to majoring in art in college. Really? I was super close. Can you draw? Uh, I haven't done it since I was a freshman in college, but uh, I even took some college courses. Just so you know, 
is hard. It is hard. <laughs> you know, that's the thing is that uh, I was drawing and I, I was doubting myself and I didn't think I could keep going. So, and ultimately, I, of course, I didn't. I pursued the English degree. But uh, my art teacher said to me, Vince, you have talent. And uh, I think it's I all in your head. I never had an art teacher tell me that. <laughs> uh, I, I drew a lot of still lives and uh, still list of lives, still lives, whatever. <laughs> it sounds weird. Still yeah, lives. Yeah. What is the plural of that? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, still living. Still, I, I drew a lot of stationary crap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But uh, he, he told me I did well. I still see him every so often. He's like, hey, Vance, how are you doing? But uh, moving on. So, so, so my rant for the day. Oh, sorry. Uh, there are certain words that get mispronounced that drive me nuts. Now, I will say that there are certain things that are regional that you cannot. Like, there are certain pronunciations of vowels. Like, uh, I know several people here in the Midwest who say hell instead of hail. So, yeah, you you can't you can't really give them too much crap for that. Yeah, that's just uh, it. Of course, it is lazy pronunciation, but that's just how it is. You can't you can't really change the way they pronounce a vowel. It's colloquial, and and I'm sorry, forgive me for stepping on your ground, but but having grown up in Arkansas, and and I used to have a bit of a drawl. Um, when I started, and I did this intentionally when I was a kid, I try, I, I tried to sound more eloquent because I wanted to sound intelligent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I was that I was that kid. You know what I mean? I, I want to sound smart, and so <laughs> I started trying to get the twang out of my voice. And all the kids around me, when I was, you know, I was in fourth or fifth grade, all, all the kids around me had, you know, you know, you know, the twang. And when when I would start speaking more like I'm I'm talking right now, they they would they would uh, they would think that um, I was I was trying. Well, they, were, they thought I was doing what I was doing, which was trying to sound intellectual. But they thought it was it was stuck up. They thought it was snooty. You know what I mean? And so I feel like if if colloquially everybody that you grew up with around you and you grew up that way, they all sound like that. It's probably socially more of a problem to try to change than that, maybe? Yeah, so, you know, I can't really judge that, but there are certain words that are, are just straight up wrong. Like, uh, for example, uh, this is the one that a few people in my family do, uh, wrestling. It's wrestling. <laughs> there is no A in the word wrestling. <laughs> so you don't pronounce that vowel that way with anything else. Yeah, you wouldn't say, I'm going to go take a rast. <laughs> I mean, it just, you wouldn't do that. Like, man, I'm tired. I need to... Or, or, man, I really have to go. Maybe I should go to the rast room. <laughs> no, you wouldn't say that. It makes make any sense. Now, there's another one. Like, it also drives me nuts when people add syllables to words or add an extra letter. Like, for example, this one drives me nuts. Drawling. Drawling. Like, you wouldn't say you drool it. I've never heard drawling. I've heard drawing. Oh, my... A drawing I've heard a lot, too. Uh, draw, drawling I hear a lot from people uh, I just heard it the other day I heard it from a 20 year old guy I he, never heard he that he said drawling to me I hear it all the time that's and, weird and I look at him and I say drawl is a word but it is not the word you are using yeah the, the <laughs> not the word that you think you're the using the irony is most people that say that probably have one <laughs> There, there is such a thing as a southern drawl, which is okay to have, but it's not the act of putting pencil or pen to paper yeah, and creating a, a picture. It can't be a verb, because if you have a drawl and you're talking, you can't say that you are currently draw, drawling, right? <laughs> like, drawling. Which, you know, you might get creative and say he drawled all over the place. I can't <laughs> even say it. Drawling. Like, it doesn't even sound draw, good. Drawling? Draw, drawled? Southern drawling. Drooled. I am I'm southern <laughs> drooled. drawling. So, so that drives me nuts. It's it's not draw, it's not draw, it's draw, and uh, yes. Now I feel like draw might be something that's from another country that sort of still exists in this one for whatever reason, but uh, I'm not sure about that. I don't know if that's factual, so I'm not going to say that's for sure. But another one that drives me nuts. Yeah, sometimes sorry, sometimes ours at the at the end of at the end of words is somewhat of a of a colloquial thing, but not as much here. I I, I hear that more with like with like some some uh, British accents in certain places in England, um, where like uh, where like sometimes sometimes in, in say like a like a Star Trek episode you'll hear Picard say um, uh, Mr. Dater like 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 da Data, but it'll say Dater because you, you know it's like a it's like a it's like that name going into another part of the sentence. So as he's going to the another part of the sentence, he puts an R at the end of it. Mm -hmm. You hear that sometimes. Uh, the another one that, that gets me, and I got two more for you. So here's here's Sorry, the, here's another one. Uh, wash. <laughs> it's no, there's no R. It's wash, <laughs> and it drives me nuts when people say Washington D.C. There's, there 
there's no R in either or any of those parts of that word or DC. Is the problem that it just sounds really ignorant? It, it, my problem is is that it's not right, and that people look at me like I'm crazy for saying that it's not right. Well, I think that some of that. I, I don't correct them to their faces. I'm not a jerk. I'm like, I, I I look at like my mother or something. And I go, wrestling is not a word. And she goes, oh, stop it. She says employee instead of employee. Yeah, and again, <laughs> some of that is so colloquial she's in cute. that it's like it's like ignorant. This is gonna sound terrible because you were just talking about. Your <laughs> I was gonna say it's like ignorant, she's not ignorant. It's but like still. ignorant parents passing things down to their kids, so that so, so so that it gets to the point where they. It's not that they're ignorant; it's that they heard it that way all, all growing up. So that's how they they, they say it. So it's yeah. still colloquial, is my point. Yeah, it's just it's more irritating because it sounds wrong. Whereas it's, just just a different pronunciation is different than adding letters to words that they're not. Everything you said is all adding a letter. Yeah, and that's that's my problem. Like for example, uh, I'll even forgive people this one, caramel. Instead of caramel. Yeah. There is another A in that word. Most, but most, most people do pronounce it that way. And there's a number of words that have multiple syllables that we have dropped to, 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 to less. Yeah, and to, I'm... To few, sorry, sorry. We're, we're doing an English thing, so I'll say it correctly. To fewer. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to begrudge somebody that issue of, uh, of uh, caramel or caramel versus caramel. Whatever. Uh, I don't really care on that one. Uh, it's, you don't really care on that <laughs> I don't really care on... Wait, what? I'm kidding. But... Uh, the one that drives me the most nuts. It's not even adding syllables or, or adding letters. It's completely changing one word to a different word. All right. Uh, I do not use my camera to take someone's picture. It is not an action. It is not a physically possible thing. I do not get out my photo album to look at pictures. Unless I have photos of pictures. <laughs> In the photo album. <laughs> That's still the same sort of thing, except that it's taking out a letter instead of adding one. It's it's pick chore. And that one's irritating because picture. That's actually a word. Yeah. Now to say that uh, say I took your picture, you'd be like, Well give me that back. My grandmother gave me that picture. She used to serve us and tea I'll every make day. Some lemonade. <laughs> I need something to hold my coffee. Give I have iced coffee I would like to put in that picture. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, and that one drives me nuts. Now, my fiance and I had this had a conversation about this the other day, and she said, in order to make the claims that I am making right now, I would have to one hundred percent pronounce everything correctly. I will admit, I do not. Right? Sure. <laughs> no, 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 you don't. But uh, there are certain words that should be obvious. Picture, <laughs> picture, picture. I don't know. I, there are certain phonetic sounds in there that are, are the same. I get it. Whatever. But uh, they're two different words. I guess for me, because I mean, I, I, I grew up in partially in an area where people mispronounced things all the time, so I got really used to it. But <laughs> I think what annoys me more than people saying words incorrectly is if I can't tell if they know they are. If it's like, it's less of an issue for me if it's like, yeah, I realize that's not correct, but we grew up saying it that way, so that's how I say it. You know what I mean? Another one. Both. <laughs> There's no L in the word both. Bo both. <laughs> both. <laughs> and, no, this is a pretty frequent thing. People say this a lot. Both. <laughs> and people look at me and they say, no, that's a perfectly valid way of pronouncing that word. I'm like, how, yeah, how wrong. Do figure, how do you figure <laughs> And now, and again, I'm, say, I'm not saying I'm exempt from pronouncing oh. things wrong, but, oh. but when I have perfectly sound logic, like, that letter is not in that word. <laughs> you almost need an extra syllable to say it. Bowolf. It's like you take a bowl and you put a diphthong at the end of it. Bowolf. <laughs> Bowolf. Man, I got a great bowl of cereal this morning. It was delicious. I had two. I had, I, I, I I had, had both I of ate them. both of them. <laughs> 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 Now, I had an argument with, uh, with with the lady the other day that she proved me wrong. Crick is an actual pronunciation of creek. Yeah. And that bothers me. <laughs> like, I'll accept it, but whatever. It's not spelled that way. That's silly. Crick. I went down to the crick to get some fish. I love fishing. I'll pronounce words however I want. <laughs> <laughs> I'll uh, pronounce uh, words however I won't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to be mean on that one. No, well, crick is a pronunciation of that word. I just think it's silly. Well, everybody, 
Thanks as always for listening to Geeks Not Nerds, the podcast. <laughs> we both appreciate it. Indeed. Indeed we do. Now go wash up before you go to dinner. <laughs> and uh, we'll be... Uh, and, and I'm, I'm going to go try to learn how to draw roll. <laughs> draw roll? <laughs> <laughs> well, well uh, we really hope you enjoyed our podcast. And uh, we'll be I back again. like a huge jerk right now. <laughs> we'll be back again with you next week uh, with uh, probably a new commentary. Um, I've got at least one in the queue right now. And uh, Vince and I are going to start recording some others. Uh, it's going to be a fun time. Uh, w- watching each other's uh, biggest childhood movies. And um, in the case of mine, Mind, uh, hearing Vince make fun of it constantly. So um, <laughs> no, I liked it. I liked oh, that movie. Oh, okay, okay, all right. Uh, well, anyway, um, we'll see you next time. I'm Captain Logan. I'm Vince. Thanks for listening.